The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's Moore as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and welcome to Lowe's More in The Blueprint. Man, I'm excited tonight, really, really excited tonight. Um, I'm actually uh, not the host tonight. Right, my my son Lowe's the third is going to be hosting tonight's show, and he has a a wonderful guest on this evening. And man, I'm looking forward to seeing him interview uh, interview her. I'm not going to mention her name because I'm going to allow him to do that. And and so we we just arrived in in Baltimore, Maryland, and hanging out with some old friends, man, some old classmates from back in the day. Uh, we're going to enjoy it. Uh, we're going to enjoy our time while Lozy is doing the interview tonight. And let me tell you something. Um, uh, if you didn't see the episode from maybe about two or three weeks ago when he had three other actors on, he did a marvelous job. It was just an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, and I got a chance. I was supposed to be at dinner but I was jumping on my phone, checking it out, man. I even asked a couple of questions uh, while I was at dinner. I was supposed to be, you know, paying attention, but um, I was excited that he was doing the show and his guest was just awesome. And tonight's guest is awesome as well. And so I want to jump right into this um, and and uh, hope you enjoy the show tonight. And hey, remember, I don't have my pebble with me, but I will make this statement. Right. I'm going to act like I'm throwing my pebble in the pond because we expect each show uh, when you hear the the interview, when you hear the guests share their stories, we expect we expect that there's going to be a ripple effect. That means when you drop a pebble in the pond, there's the waves that go across the water. So we don't know what impact tonight's show is going to have. It may be an, an immediate impact in someone's life or somewhere down the road, uh, something that's said tonight by our guests will impact you. And, and, you know, you just never know later on, somebody might not, might not see the show tonight, but they will tune in later and it would impact them there. So uh, looking forward to it. Uh, enjoy tonight. God bless you guys. And I want to start off uh, with, with the book of the week. Yeah, this is one of one of my favorite. I, I don't know if you guys are Dr. Seuss fans, but I'm a big Dr. Seuss fan, even though I don't have my favorite book up here. But uh, the cat in the hat, we all remember the cat in the hat. And we all re always remember one of my other favorite books is Green Eggs and Ham. Right. And then the ABC uh, of Dr. Seuss and then all oh, the places you should go. I used to I used to read that book man and thinking and imagine in my mind that I was going somewhere. And then of course, the last book here is by Dr. Seuss is one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I, I, man, I, you know, we kind of grew up on these. I don't know if many people read uh, Dr. Seuss. I believe they're still reading Dr. Seuss. And when you're starting your kids off, man, uh, what better book to start it off with? And I, I just get a kick out of every time I see uh, the cat and the at, I just laugh because I know that growing up with Dr. Seuss and the cat in the hat was, was a very, uh, important time in my life. So, uh, make sure you got your, your Dr. Seuss and your cat in the hat collection. So, and then the word of the week is fantastic. I look, man, you know, one of my favorite words is wow, which is another form of fantastic. Right. That just an amazing word. When somebody says you are fantastic, just like just like Lozy and just like the guests tonight, they are fantastic. And I'm not just talking about their gift. I'm not talking about their talent. I'm talking about they are fantastic people. And and that's that's more important than anything. 
when somebody says you're a fantastic person. And then next, we have the Hill Harper, Pierce Harper, affirmation or quote moment. And, and here it goes. It's from Dr. Seuss, of course. Uh, Today you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, Dr. Seuss used to say that all the time. I don't know if you remember it, but it is a good quote. It's a good quote to quote. And then my music of the week and my movie of the week, The Prince of Egypt. I don't know if you guys remember The Prince of Egypt, but the soundtrack from there were two soundtracks to The Prince of Egypt. There was the original soundtrack uh, to the to the movie The Prince of Egypt. And then there's an inspirational uh, soundtrack by uh, Kirk Franklin and many other artists. And you, if you didn't get a chance to listen to that, go to YouTube and check out the inspirational version of The Prince of Egypt. Man, just awesome soundtrack. And then finally, the movie of the week. Uh, I had an opportunity uh, to watch uh, maybe about a month ago, Vivo um a disney film man i really enjoyed this if you didn't get a chance to see this make sure you see uh this movie especially sit down it's a family movie you know because i'm always reminded every sunday every sunday evening at seven o'clock when i was a little kid uh we used to sit down as a family and watch disney right and disney used to come on for about 30 minutes to an hour and we would watch it as a family and and so disney is, does some amazing stuff so uh at this time i'm going to turn this over to lozy Lowe's the third and he's going to introduce our guest for this evening hey dad what's up Lozy? how are you i'm good no complaints all right all right well thank you for letting me guest host again and i hope i do you proud <laughs> you always make me proud, so that's going to be easy. Okay. Well, no pressure then. <laughs> All right. I well, love you, and you enjoy yourself. All right. Love you, too. All right. Bye-bye. Oh. Yeah. All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Blueprint Podcast. I am so excited to be here with you again, and so excited for my dad to let me guest host again. And... Honestly, I have some great guests. I had some great guests on last time, and I have another great guest on this week. I'm going to read her bio. Courtney Lynn is an actor, voiceover artist, choreographer based out of Los Angeles. She graduated from Occidental College with a degree in psychology with an emphasis in neuroscience. That's how tough she is, neuroscience, and also recently graduated from the UCLA Film and Theater School Professional Program for Acting on Camera in 2021. So congratulations to Court for that. We're going to bring Court in, but before we do that, and the reason why I'm calling her Court, everyone, I feel like I should preface this, is because she is one of my best friends. We went to college together, and I'm just excited to share her with you all because she is, as my dad would say, fantastic. Wow. So I'm going to give you a quick little snippet so you can get to know Courtney. Oh, this is going to be good, y'all. Do you think he's dead? I mean, if he threatened to kill us, that's like self-defense, right? Uh, hold on. I'm, I'm pooping. We were playing peekaboo. My hands were over my eyes. But then one day I peeked and no one was there and I never saw my dad again. Speaking of Heather, what's your take on her? Like her general vibe, outlook, appearance? Rose, I need you to keep out of my personal life. Come on, just a little tidbit. This whole abstinence thing has been killing me. Absolutely not. 
Oh! <laughs> hey, Court, everyone. This is Courtney. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yes. So, Court, first, I have to. We have to talk about what just happened. Number one. <laughs> When did you know you were funny? I don't know. <laughs> My mom thinks I'm funny. <laughs> like, that's a win. My mom thinks I'm funny too, but that doesn't mean I'm yeah, funny. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I think you think I'm funny and like my sure. handful of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Okay, okay. So, all right. Tell everyone who you are, where you grew up, just about you. Okay. Um, so I'm from San Diego, um, and I moved to LA and, uh, one of the main reasons I, I wanted to move to LA was a college and then B at the time, um, I was competing in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wanted to be somewhere where I knew there'd be a dance scene. Um, so I moved to LA, um, joined, uh, an elite competitive team and then I was in college and um, then, like, partially through college, um, I had a very bad back injury. And um, on top of that, I quickly realized that as much as I loved um, science, um, I did not like needles. <laughs> um, I I found myself very emotional um, when it comes like, like, I don't know. I feel like if I had to tell someone that their significant other had cancer, Listen. I would be crying and they'd have to comfort me, exactly. you know, <laughs> about it. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. And then, and then there was research, but then I don't know, probably not a lot of you have worked in a rat lab. Um, it's kind of traumatizing working with rats, uh, would not recommend it. So I was like, okay, can't do that. And then can't do dance forever and retire at 30. So I was like, okay, I'll do acting. So I decided to jump like headfirst into that. And then I've stayed in LA for the industry ever since. Wow. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't know when I was in school, me, well, me and Court were both in school. She started to take an acting class. And when I graduated, I didn't even know what I wanted to do with my life. But because Court was pursuing acting, I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk <laughs> step by step, copy her. And everyone who knows <laughs> me knows that I am really good at copying. I'm just going to emulate. And yes. so I got into the acting class. I started to do things babysitting very similarly to her. And next thing you know, I had some traction and she was there every step of the way to help support me. So she a real one, y'all. Okay. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so, so here, this is a good question. So what, what I want to know is when did you realize that you were like passionate about acting? Because as you mentioned, like you, you're, you're so talented in so many other places. You're dancing, you're a psychology with the emphasis in neuroscience. Like where did acting even like come from? Um, well, I always knew I loved performing. Um, and there's a lot of performance in dance. Like in dance, you get to be so many characters. I mean, I was doing hip hop. Like if you know me, I'm so like not aggressive at all. But like, you know, in hip hop, like I could yeah. be as aggressive as I wanted to be or I could do something really emotional. And and I always knew I connected with human emotions um, pretty deeply, like from a young age. Um, you know, I'd watch movies and I'd watch a scene and I'd cry about it. And then later, like by myself, I'd like reenact the scene in my room mm. and I'd cry about it again. You know, so I was like, <laughs> I just like love performing and 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 bringing emotions out. And, and I could do that with dance. Um, and so when I realized, you know, I wasn't going to have dance forever, I was like, where else can I do that? Um, and I was like, oh, acting. But, you know, growing up as I'm, I'm Chinese, I was raised by my my mother's from Taiwan and you know, a career in the arts was not anything that was even fathom fathomable. That's the word growing up. Don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I'd never even, you know, if I had known, maybe I would have, you know, had a different major. But um, mm. I just didn't discover that it could be like an actual thing in my life that you can pursue until college. Yeah. Okay. So my kind of follow up question 
is how did you land on a class? Like, how did you just decide, like, I'm going to jump into the class? And most people, we call it like our oxy bubble. Like when you're in there, it's kind of hard to branch out. So like the fact that you were able to find a class and do it consistently while you were doing all the other things. I mean, she was president of our dance production, (laughs) choreographing, like it was was working two jobs. I was like, (laughs) listen, the people, the people don't know. Here is, here is a woman here who is just busy beyond busy but found some time off campus to join an acting class like how did you get to that place um i well i knew i needed to be in class i i, I knew i didn't want to do theater um so that's why i never did oxy theater um so <laughs> i <laughs> um i was like i need to get in class and i didn't know what class to go to i called a thousand places i was also like poor you know i was working two jobs but when you're a student and um you know, and you have all these other extracurriculars going on in school. It's like you don't have a ton of time to work. So I was like, okay, I need to go somewhere like affordable. So I literally, I found my first acting class on Groupon. <laughs> but Absolutely. yeah, you know, and and I'm I was lucky enough to have a car. I know a lot of people aren't afforded that luxury. Mm-hmm. And um, so I had a car, and then I planned my senior year so that by fall semester. I would be completely done with my credits. I always took more classes than I needed to. I, I, I just wanted to be done so that my senior year I could take less classes during mm-hmm. the school day and then also be able to take acting class like outside of school. And I wow. did that twice a week nice. in college. That is, that is crazy. So, okay, really quickly, before we get on any, any further, I know you were talking about dance. Can you give everyone just like a quick tidbit about your dance background? I'll let everyone know now that Courtney is a, I think I mentioned this in her, in her bio that she's a choreographer. But before, but like that, before that, she's a, I'm gonna let her explain it. She's gonna dance, not right now, but she, <laughs> um, I know, right? That's not exactly, <laughs> she's gonna dance, she's gonna dance. No, not right now. But she's gonna tell us a little bit about her dance uh, background and then we'll watch a little bit something. Uh, yeah, so I started dancing really late. I feel like most dancers are like, I started when I was three. Um, I didn't formally start till I was like 15, um, oh. but I loved it. I loved it so much. I was literally in the dance studio like three to five times a week. Wow. Um, and I, I loved it so much. And I and I joined a competition team right away. So I was just competing and competing. And, and I knew when I left for college, like I, I wasn't done yet with it. So I wanted to go somewhere like L.A. where I know the competition seems really good. And I just competed and competed until my body couldn't literally couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> and then, I mean, I still teach dance now. Um, I choreograph. Mm-hmm. I've choreographed um, for like plays and shows and commercials. Um, but right now it's mostly just, um, like private teaching, um, just cause it's less strenuous, you know, I'm not on a 60 hour dance week anymore. And for anyone who's listening, I have this question for you, Court. how has dancing impacted like your ability to be able to create characters? Maybe how did, how do you use it in your acting? Is it usable? Um, absolutely. It's, I'm, I'm not awkward. I feel like with my body, like I, I kind of always know what to do with my body. Um, and I, and like for acting, you know, sometimes if, if you're only used to seeing yourself on a certain frame and then whether they push out or in, sometimes it can be be kind of like, oh, they're out now. Now they can see my hands. Okay. What are my hands going to do? You know? Um, and even with voiceover, I'm so physical with my voiceover acting. Like I, I do a session in here and I'm drenched in sweat by the end of it because I'm moving around so much. But it's because, you know, you have to bring to life this character just through your voice and they have to like sound like they're doing all these things. So you are doing all those things in your booth um, when you're mm-hmm. putting it into your acting. OK, OK, hold on. We're going to we're going to show everyone a little bit of dance and then we're going to get right back into it. Okay. Shimmy, 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 yeah, shimmy, y'all. Bad girls don't swallow, la, la, la. Bust down on my wrist in it, bitch. My picky rain bigger than this. Matter how I'm never lives. Dollar got too many girls. Matter how I'm never lives. All she wears red bottom heels. Push it back it up, put it on the top. Push it drop it low, put it on the ground. DJ Papa, she can follow that. Champagne. Shimmy, 
shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. Drink, swalla, la, la. Drink, swalla, la, la. Hold up now. I'm gonna have to mm, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Uh, uh, okay, see, listen. My fiance is laughing at me right yes. now. He's a hater. <laughs> also, I want everyone to know that Lowe's filmed that video. <laughs> Ooh, you, saw, you saw that cinematography. Yeah, he was in the background, still. like, who? Oh, oh, oh. I mean, you're angles. honestly, your hands look like a freaking glider. Like, it looks like you have the camera on a glider. He's like so smooth with it. You hear that, mom? <laughs> No more shaky hands. No more shaky hands. <laughs> Lauren says, get it, girl. <laughs> so, yeah, this is like, I, I kind of want to point this out because the way that your, your relationship to dancing is very similar to my relationship to music, mm -hmm. where it's not like, it's not that we have the gift and it's not that we're not using it anymore, but we're finding other ways to utilize it within our art, utilize it. No, well, not me really to utilize it and to help you with your finances, like whatever the, the case may be, every, all the things that we've done, especially in our career path right now, feels like they're still able to be applied. Is that mm -hmm. like, does that make any sense? Am I making yeah, sense? No, definitely. Yeah. All right. I mean, I feel like every everyone has that thing. I mean, because most people, unless you started with your with uh, started as a child, like you know, I, I feel like a lot of people I know started in their twenties, like I did, um, and you know, you bring whatever you had before that into your um, craft. Yeah. So let's talk about like like family. Mm hmm. Who in your family has like inspired you to maybe like do what you're doing? Like, how has that like kind of transpired? Like, what kind of support that you have? I know you mentioned obviously. I know that she has a fiance, and I know that <laughs> she has best friends. But like, yeah. how? Like, what's the support? Tell, tell everyone about what your support system is like. Um, I was very much the driving force behind what I wanted to do. Um, mostly because none of my family is in entertainment at all. Like, no one no one knows anything. So when I was figuring it out, I was really figuring it all out by myself. Um, so when I told my mom, you know, of course she wasn't like thrilled because, you know, I had gone to school like as basically a pre-med student and I was like, JK mom, I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. And, you know, and she was, she was supportive. She wasn't like, you know, disappointed or anything, but she was like, okay, do what makes you happy. Um, which is, and I love her so much. Cause like, she still doesn't really get it, you know, like she gets it, but she doesn't um, right. like she just started watching Netflix like two years ago. You know, she like doesn't know about streaming. She doesn't. So when I say like, hey, I was on this show with this celebrity, she'll be like, OK, cool. Like, <laughs> like she doesn't really. But, you know, but she supports me. Um, of course. And then uh, the other person uh, who in my family who really supported me when I first started was my grandpa. Um, he passed away now. He's uh, passed away about three years ago. Um, which makes me really sad because I've I've had a lot of success in the last couple of years that he never got to see. But he was one of the first people in my family that was like, do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so love my grandpa so much for that. Um, but generally, you know, I, I, I didn't get any like resistance or hate from any close person, friend or family, um, which I feel really lucky for to have such supportive people around me. I kind of want to kind of piggyback off of something that you said. Um, this career is so like what's the word unpredictable yeah. and it's and it's hard because you want we want i want to have success while all of my family is still around to enjoy it as well yeah but the hard part about it is there's literally no way to know when that job is going to happen when that booking is going to happen when those materials are going to happen but I, there feels like there's so much sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's not the right word in, in, in this career path. Do you feel that way at all? Like, do you feel like that there's, um, that this, because of the hours that, let me, let me make this question more specific because of the hours that you have to put in when you get a script, when you are teaching a dance class, when you teach, what time do you have to like, make sure that you're like being present and living your life and reaching out to your family and things of that sort. Do you feel that way? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's like, you know, ingrained capitalism or the fact that I'm a Capricorn, <laughs> um, something about that. But I, I do find um, having an off button for myself. Um, sometimes I can't find it, you know, like, 
you know, when so much of your, your life is, I don't know. I, I feel like you said a lot of stuff. It's, it's hard to Sorry. address it all. I'll just address <laughs> one little bit at a time and then you can okay. remind me. Um, if I remember. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like, let's see. Now I can't remember the question. <laughs> like, wait all a second. Right. Oh yeah. The off button thing. Um, so it's like, you know, you have to find a balance that works for you. Um, personally for me, I, love working. <laughs> I love it. Like I, I, one of my worst fears is to wake up one day and be really old and regret how I've spent my life. So that's why right. I knew like, you know, like, don't be a doctor. Like you're going to regret it. Like, don't be this, like, you're going to like, you need to do what you want to do now while you can. Um, so I put everything, everything into, into what I wanted to do. And, and part of that is figuring out how that's going to work in a way that's not going to kill you. That's going to mm -hmm. keep you happy, you know? So right. like, you know, I, I have friends who are really supportive. A lot of my friends are in the business, you know, we hang out and we do work together. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, just finding ways, you know, balancing, having a dating life and, and still being an actor and, and, you know, finding someone if they're not an actor, who can understand the industry and know that, you know, you're going to have a job that's similar to a nine to five to pay the bills. And then you're going to have your acting career. You know, you just, you have less time to do other things. So you really have to love what you're doing. Um, it, there's better ways to make money. You know, there's better ways to become famous, easier ways, probably. Um, you, you really have to love what you're doing. Yeah, I definitely feel that. And um, I've on this journey as well of like making sure that I'm not only happy when things are going well. I know we had this conversation before, yeah. but like kind of finding ways to make sure that, you know, I am balanced and sustainable, even when, you know, maybe I didn't book the job or maybe I haven't gotten an audition or whatever the experience may be. Um, do you find yourself really? Yeah, to that? totally. I mean, I feel like, the best auditions I've sent in in my life, I never mm -hmm. book. Like the yeah. auditions, I literally, I'll rewatch them and I'll listen to it. I'll be like, that was a freaking great audition. Like they're crazy, you know, like they're lost, you know? And then there's like other things where I look at it. I'm like, what the heck is this? Uh, send it off. And then, and then I book <laughs> it and I'm like, wait, what just happened? Um, So it's like, uh, like, wait, sorry. Can you, can you repeat the, the question one more time? I feel like I'm losing my train of thought. I don't even remember what the question was. Oh, no. No, I had a point. Now I can't remember it. If someone knows in the comments, just write it in there. <laughs> like, what were we talking about? This we're is the exactly. worst if interview ever. <laughs> can't remember questions that were just asked. Listen, I, I was just... It's my job so is to loaded. ask the questions. I know. <laughs> not to remember what they were. <laughs> these questions are so loaded and they're so good. I just feel like I get off track really easily. Yeah. Well, that's because I'm sure it will come back to us yes. at some point. Yes. Um, oh, I thought, no, I know what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> How to make your happiness sustainable even when- Oh, yeah. Okay. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. So my next point being, you know, it it's hard. You know, I still have, you know, before, before I could actually, you know, start like use, before I could actually be a actor like and have that be like my full living you know it's easy to get really frustrated you know when you know for I, I would say for the last two years before I had my big break I knew I knew I was just as good as the people I was competing against and the only thing that was stacked against me was I, I no one knew who I was you know that's the only thing you know like I knew I was auditioning you know, for roles that I, for like, I know for a fact, like celebrities had also auditioned for and like, are they, be were they better than me? No. Like, the, and I just knew it, but like, but no one else recognized it, you know? And, and you just, you have to be so true to yourself and be like, no, like I got this. Like, I'm just, you got to keep going, keep grinding and, and find like the joy of like the process. So like, like I love auditioning. I love it. I know it can seem daunting, but auditioning you know finding the quirks of the character and like like the weird like noises that they make or like you know whatever like that's my favorite part of of this business so like finding like love and like the little quirks and and the little facets that make up like this whole life of like being in the industry um i feel like that's what keeps you sane also having a life outside of acting is really important it's true 
you know. That's very true. Yeah. So I want to kind of ask a question about something you um, specifically touched on. What? I know. Like, make sure you get yourself some water. I know. Have some water, water breaks, yeah. whatever you need. Ah, okay. So you, I know you mentioned saying that when you started off in the industry, you started off kind of like cold turkey, not knowing anybody. Zero. So, I knew nothing. So for people who are in the industry or maybe they're starting and or they're 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 currently they're somewhere and they don't know, they feel like they have to be connected. I want you to tell them how you got from point A to point B, from not knowing anyone to where you are right now. Um I so I jumped into a class like totally blind. Um, and then after a few years, I realized um, it wasn't a good fit for me anymore. And so my goal was, I was like, I want to train with like the most well-known people that I can find. So I did a lot of research and I wish I'd done this earlier. Honestly, I think it's easy to get comfortable where you are. Um, mm -hmm. I think you do have to constantly be trying new things. Um, so uh, that's something I wish I'd done differently. Um, wow. But so I just started researching and then I jumped into like many different classes and doing that, I also completely expanded my community of people around mm -hmm. me. And um, I think uh, I hate using the word networking because networking feels disingenuous and icky. Yeah, like yeah, but I, I just started making friends. You know, you just you just start you just start making friends everywhere you go and then you learn more things you you learn you put more things in your toolbox um you know not just in the craft but like kind of like how to run your business you, you start asking around oh like how did you do this how did you do that and and then you kind of you know kind of like what you did with me <laughs> you kind of watch other people and like you know i i learned so much just by meeting new people all the time i took so many classes like all of the money that i made mm -hmm. from all of my plethora of side jobs I was working so many jobs at one point like six jobs at the same time yeah. um went into like new classes new this new equipment workshops you know because I was like I just want to learn I just want to absorb everything and then finally you know I I learn a little thing here learn a little thing there learn, learn a little thing there and I applied that all to my life combined like with my own like drive because I feel like I'm just so like in, like insatiable like I hunger for learning new things and and how to do things in, in new ways and new perspectives so by applying all of that like slowly over time I kind of found a flow and what worked for me and then you know I I, I just learned how to be a better business person and wow. and I truly think your business um, more than your craft is going to bring you farther than just your craft. Cause you can have your craft, but then, but then you don't know how to get out there. You know, you need to know how to, how to get out there and, and be seen. Really quickly, everyone, that was a great response. I'm going to share uh, Courtney's website in the chat. Definitely at some point, go check on there. You can find all of her materials there. You can just see how meticulous, how dedicated she is to her craft. This website is beautiful <laughs> i made like, it myself it's, but listen, <laughs> i designed she made, it <laughs> she made it herself and that that's goals right there because you know okay this is a you're going right into another question sometimes you just you were already like this as a student yes right and you just yeah. applied this to your career yeah and that's absolutely. manifested in so many different ways the fact that you can just courtney is a go getter okay yeah. she's not going to sit back and wait for people to do it for her she's going to figure it out She's going to ask the questions and it shows in your, in your library and how you present yourself. Yeah. I literally, guys, I taught myself everything. Like I didn't know how to build a website, taught myself how to build a website. You know what I mean? It's like, I didn't know how to do this. I don't know. Like I'll, I'll just teach myself or find someone and like pay them to teach me. Cause I want to know. Right. That's, that's crazy. So, okay. Question. We're going to get to a little bit of another acting question. Okay. Um, if you could select one actor to be in a project with, who is it? What's the genre? And any other details you would like to give? Only one. Can I do? Okay, one for each. Well, one for comedic, one for theatrical or drama. Okay, okay. Um, comedic, uh, Jackie Chan. Yes. <laughs> Love Jackie Chan. He's amazing. <laughs> I want it to be an action comedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and a very, very close, um, runner up to Jackie Chan is Kristen Bell. 
yes um and then uh for drama viola davis i want her to cry on me i want to feel her snot like on my face (laughs) that's what i want that's a, that'd be a dream come true. This magical, this yeah. magical serum of youth or exactly. of talent. It's just gonna have just a little. I want to like bit. absorb it and exactly. soothe myself. Yeah. Uh, Viola's a queen. She is. She's a queen. Um. So, <laughs> so really quickly, I know we saw a bit of your comedy, your comedy reel. Mm-hmm. Do you have a preference? between comedy and drama do you do like what what do you feel like is there do you lean towards one or the other or just kind of how's your um experience been with navigating both of those different spaces um my favorite genres are dark comedies Mm. um which are a type of dramedy so i feel like i cheated i got (laughs) both of them um no just because i think i don't know i just you know i love watching shows to feel good so Mm -hmm. comedies but i think the best comedies are the ones that contain darkness in them right because it makes them more realistic they're not so like flippant um and coincidentally like the first two shows i ever booked were both dark comedies Mm. um which i think is really awesome because it matches my branding (laughs) um so yeah any kind of dark comedy i'm i'm obsessed with okay so we're gonna watch a quick clip of some of courtney's theatrical work and then we're gonna come back to a question i have about branding since you since you brought that up right into it so here we go the application for credit never filed anywhere i told you to follow the money i did i found out that the application was fake who could fabricate an application that's what following the money means Okay, I can see if anyone at City Hall is living beyond their means and then hack into the city system to find out who we're dealing with. FYI, they still run on Fortran, so I might crash the whole network for a while. The whole city? For a while. I need one more minute. Okay, just give me one more minute. No! Listen, I love those two clips. And for (laughs) everyone watching, like this is this is a reason why they are so pinpointed when you watch them you know you you know Courtney and you know the character that she's playing that she has in her bag right away and you mentioned branding and I want to know like kind of how did you how were you able to figure out what type of characters you feel like were in your wheelhouse like I know you're practice we're, we're actors so we practice different characters but are there any any characters or types that you feel like right away you're gonna you know you can just nail this is three questions in the um, I know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> brain melting. Um, so I think, um, I don't know, I, it, it's hard because I feel like when I first started, you know, I feel like I was asking about my branding forever. And I'd, mm-hmm. I'd be like, you know, asking all my friends like, oh, like, what, what do you think I could do? What do you think I could do? But the problem is all the people who know me, know me in such different areas of my life that they right. saw me as completely different things, which was very unhelpful for branding, you know, when everyone's like, I see you as this and it's the, and this, and then those are like opposites, you know, that's, that yeah. doesn't help. Um, so I, I worked with, um, a program, um, and they kind of helped me, um, like put together some spreadsheets. I do a lot of spreadsheeting cause I'm nerdy, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, to kind of like analyze like branding stuff. And then I, and I, and I also thought about, you know, a, a lot of branding is like what you want your branding to be too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't be afraid to get pigeonholed into something. Cause if you don't want to be that thing, you can always change your branding. You know, your branding is just how you present yourself to others. So if you want to change that, you can change it. Um, like I knew that I, I, I lean comedic, generally um i also knew i was like great at crying because i'm naturally <laughs> really emotional um and then i knew i i lean smart when people mm-hmm. talk to me like i come across as educated and articulate and i also read very young so i was like okay i want to do roles that kind of like fall into those categories 
And then I was also thinking about, you know, general show types. So I was like, okay, I want that girl that I just thought of in my head, but in a procedural show. And then, yes. and then that girl, but, you know, now we're in a college, you know, comedy and like that girl. Um, and, and I, and I wanted to have some sort of fantasy thing. Cause I think it'd be really cool to be on a fantasy show. Yeah. <laughs> I want to oh, have okay. magic. <laughs> yeah. A couple of shots just popped up and as everyone can see, you know, Depending on the makeup, the hair, the outfit, Courtney, she could play everything that you see on your TV. So listen, <laughs> I'm going to just say this right now. Book her. <laughs> Book her. Let's do it. Let's get it together. I don't think she doesn't even need this promotion. She got it like that. But still, the fact of the matter <laughs> is that when you're confident enough to know that you could do anything, but you also know what your wheelhouse is, I think that's, that's, that's really smart to do. All right. All right, I have another. Okay, I have another question for you. Okay, this is this is good. So, everyone, it's very clear. Court is in a in a space. She is in a booth, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about this. Court is a big time voiceover artist. How did that happen? How how did first that? Yeah, that's to be the first question. How did that happen? I was big, <laughs> but how did that happen? Okay, let's talk. I'm going to run, run through this story and keep it brief. Right. Um, so I was on a web series um, mm -hmm. for a college and I was randomly talking to the DP and I don't know how voice ever got brought up, but I, I think I had said something along the lines of, Oh, I, I'm interested in getting in VO, but you know, I haven't really looked into it, especially because, you know, acting is kind of like all encompassing the thought of, bringing in this new thing was a little overwhelming, but then the DP was like, Oh, my mom's a coach. Should I give her your number? I was like, yeah, sure. So I met his mom in her class, started taking classes with her. And while I was taking classes with her, um, I was on the LA casting, which is an auditions website for actors. And I got an audition for um, this voiceover role. It was like non-union 50 bucks. I was like, sure. Showed up to this audition. They had it on a live stage, which is very unusual for voiceover. Normally, we're yeah. in a booth like this. And they wanted me to turn around and have my back facing them with the mic and deliver the lines. So I did that. I turned around. I was about to deliver the lines. I looked down. I saw all this cat hair on my butt. And, and, <laughs> and the mic was on. But, you know, yeah. I wasn't thinking about that. I looked down. I was like, oh, crap. This hair on my ass. So, like, I said something. <laughs> and then immediately the producers started laughing. They were laughing so hard. I turned around, like, confused. And he was like, oh, my gosh. She's so funny. We need to hire her. She knows how to tell <laughs> jokes. And I was like, I wasn't trying to tell jokes. You know, it was like a total fluke. Anyways, they hired me on the spot. I did the job, went to class, and I told my coach, and she was like, oh, like, have you signed the contract? I was like, no. And she was like, well, make sure your agent looks at it. And I was like, I don't have an agent. And she was like, oh, I'll get you an agent. She literally just put me in contact um, with an agent um, who read the contract and was like, yeah, this is crap, but if you want to do it, go ahead. And then ever since then, she started sending me out on auditions. <laughs> wow. Yeah. First of all, I'm still gagged by the fact that you're – your coach got you, uh, was like, hey, you need an agent. I'm going to hook you up and was able to do that and actually follow through on it. That's a win. Yeah, it was. And th this agent, though, in particular, works a lot with the studio. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I definitely got lucky um, wow. that I was at this particular studio when that happened. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, oh, <laughs> Lauren said, where they do that at? <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. We want to so tell us a little about about like your um your setup. What's happening here? What what where are we? I know where we are, but tell everyone yes. where we are. We're in my house. Mm -hmm. If you can see, that's my <laughs> that's yes. my dining table. Oh, now I can't close the door. That's my <laughs> dining table. Um, I didn't always have a setup as glamorous as this. I used to audition um I just out of my closet. Um, but that was pre pandemic when all bookings went through studios, but nowadays you must have a home studio if you want to work in voiceover. Um, so during the pandemic, I, I, um, I was basically like, I had had some success in voiceover, but not a ton. Um, and during the pandemic, I was direct booked on this giant video game job, which I ended up losing because I didn't have a home studio because before then you didn't need one. They would always right. book you in a studio. So I cried a lot. I cried for like three days straight. And then I went into full Courtney mode where I was like, they can't tell me what to do. I'm going to learn how to do this. And then I was unemployed because of the pandemic. And I literally spent all of my time 
learning about home studios. I watched so many YouTube videos. I learned about new programs, um, things like Source Connect, IPDTL, um, what is ISDN, like all these like weird technical terms. Cause you have to become an audio engineer basically when you have a home studio. Right. And then I was like, you know, I felt really crazy about it. I spent all this money on new demos. And then I was like, I'm going to, you know, build a booth in my closet. So I, I built a new booth in my closet and then I had a little more success. And I was like, I think I'm going to do something crazy and like hire someone to like build me a booth. It was like one of the most expensive purchases I had ever done. But, you know, by then I had a stimmy check and uh, yes. some unemployment money. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to spend all of my government <laughs> on my voiceover setup which I did nice. and like coinciding with that I just had a huge boom um and and now I, I can work like full-time as an actor because of it wow okay so for the some of the things that you can tell us what have been the most exciting jobs and voiceover that you feel like you've or have done um it doesn't have hmm. to be no not necessarily like like the biggest, but like okay. exciting in terms of the role or the character or what you got were able to bring to it. Okay. Um that's hard. <laughs> yeah. I I did a big national campaign um for the government of California, uh just telling it was like a COVID like PSA. It was just like mm -hmm. like masks, like how how to basically gather safely. I thought that was yeah. cool just because um I'm like, you know all for that. And I was like, yeah, yes. good to be a part of the message. Um, and I think there's been some really cool uh, video games that I've been able to be a part of. Um, one for Paladins, which I know you have the video for. Yeah. Um, and then my, I think the coolest, like the coolest thing that I'm doing, uh, the one that I, I can't talk about yet because um, I'm under NDA. Um, but this one was really special because um, after I booked the role, they kind of rewrote the character to be more like me. So, um, you know, wow. she became half Taiwanese and like, you know, just all these like little things about her. And, and it was just like, it was so cool to, to kind of be part, a little bit a part of the development of the character. Wow. Um, and that comes out in 2022. Yeah. So yeah. everyone keep on look out for that. And again, you can do that by following Courtney's web, looking at Courtney's website. It's in the chat. I mean, in the comment section, also Courtney on Instagram and Twitter at the Courtney Lynn. And yeah. we're going to jump into, we're going to play Courtney's voiceover, voiceover kind of like demo. And yeah, then we're going to come back and have, have a couple of questions from the audience. So, here we go. Boom. It's got to be around here somewhere. Watch out! Don't get yourself killed, okay? Well, can't let these go to waste. Need healing! No. All the magistrates! Seriously? Ah. Welcome to Ship It or Sink It, Double Date Edition, where we combine Nick BFFs from two different shows and see if they'd ship or sink. First up, it's Lex and Presley from Side Hustle with Henry and Jasper from Henry Danger. Let's compare their best qualities in round one. Personality perks. Proud and loud Southeast Asian flavors. Omsom. Dish starters that you just need to rip, pour, and fire up. Order your Omsom sampler today in collaboration with Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon. Solving proofs in between plays. Hot yoga without sweating art history. Studying bio, testing chemistry. However you study, learn it, own it. Quizlet plus expert explanations plus advanced flashcards plus personalized study paths. Hello there. This is Jenny X. I was almost late for our live stream tonight. I've been so crazy busy with schoolwork. I also have exams coming up, but I didn't want to keep you all waiting. So I thought I'd get all of my homework done while talking with you all. Oh, dang. Okay, so... How much of that was filmed right in your home studio? Mm, half of it. But oh, wow. honestly, like 90% of the stuff I do is from my home studio. Damien. Listen. Oh, Damien. <laughs> my cat's so. here to. Oh, you can't see him. You can't He's see just him. lurking outside the door. Like, 
Like, can you hurry up? Damien. Oh, I can't I can't bring the camera down okay. though. Like, he's here. He's here with us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Everyone like during the pandemic, it was really crazy time, but voiceover auditions were booming. Huge explosion in the voiceover industry because we can do everything isolated. I'm yeah. here, the sound engineers there, the directors there, the producers are there, there and there. Like <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. And I, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if everyone kind of knew that last clip, uh, Court was doing a, a dubbing and that mm-hmm. show is on Netflix. And that's pretty cool too, because I, you know, these are things you, you will be driving in the car. You hear people talking. We're watching commercials every day. You hear people talking and part of you see ads, you hear people talking and you don't realize that those are voiceover artists working yeah. until you have <laughs> friends in there and they're doing it and they're booking it. And I'm like, I know that voice. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you hear it, you're like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. No, there was a couple of times you sent me something and I'm like, are you in that? <laughs> yeah. Like, was that, was that your voice? Like you think that someone that I talk to all the time, I would be able to know the voice, but you can do so many amazing things with it. Yeah, it's all based on genre and what you're doing. Oh, my gosh. Which, oh, it's going to lead us to... I have to show everyone this really quickly. Um, it's going to be one of our, our videos. Speaking of all the amazing things that... What are they called? Affectations that you can do to your voice? I'll show you something from Courtney's TikTok. It's her <laughs> doing some... Uh, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just save this so you can just see. Well, you're no fun. Huh? Maybe they left the plate over there. Don't you remember? Yesterday you made us promise not to let you eat any cookies. Hey, give me some of that waffle, Philip. Nah, Lillian, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten since since the last time I eat it. But Daddy, it wasn't my fault. The babies made me do it. Tommy, I want you to meet someone very special. This is your brother, Dylan. Thanks, Chucky. You're the best brother in the whole world. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. If anyone knows Rugrats, I mean, how can you not love that? (laughs) <laughs> like there, there's no way like i watched that so many times if you oh i don't think i have your tiktok but it's the can, same it's everything uh, is the courtney lynn listen follow yeah. courtney on tiktok at the courtney lynn she's always i'm like for someone so talented and also being able to bring it back and and have a platform on social media that's relatable in that way like it's extremely important we're gonna hop into some questions here because they are they are coming in. So the first thing is from my, our friend Lauren. Lauren says, Courtney, she wants to know the gear. She, I think she wants to know specifics. She says, what is your gear set up for voiceover? Um, so my setup's pretty fancy. It wasn't always this fancy, and it doesn't need to be this fancy if you want to do voiceover. I'm just fancy now because I had a friend who gave me some deals. But um, I have a uh, my mic here. Um, it's a Neumann TLM 103. Um, this is industry standard. Um, as far as microphones go, you don't need to get one more expensive than this. This is what most studios have anyways. Um, and then my interface, which is there. Um, that's an Apollo twin. Um, and then I just work off my MacBook pro. Um, and I have my, I have a monitor in here. I keep my computer out there because of the noise. Um, And yeah, those are my main pieces of equipment. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So Lauren, I hope you got those, those tidbits. And if you have any questions, is it okay for people to, to read, to send you DMS and is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, Courtney's Instagram, her Twitter. Yeah. If it's, uh, if it's voiceover specific, um, Mm -hmm. I offer free 20 minute consultations. Um, You can just email me um, from my website. Um, and yeah, I'm more than happy to do that for people. Hold on now. We need to, we need to get this picture up here. Cause she talking. Oh yeah. That you can also email that email. Book me at yeah. the Courtney Lynn.com. Yeah. Go to her website. Yeah. She's talking facts. Y'all giving nuggets. Yeah, free <laughs> consultation, 20 minutes. Come on. Yeah. I got to get on it. Get on it. Okay. So our next question we have here. Oh, is from my aunt Dee. She says, 
Oh, we remember Aunt Didi from one time. We're side note, where we're in college and we were, I was doing like a Spider Man picture. We have a Spider Man picture. Oh, yeah. Like laying on me. That. And Aunt Didi comments and she says, Get off of my nephew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she said it in the comments. I remember that. It was, it was like, hilarious. Oop, you, oop, oop, oop. Okay. <laughs> so Andidi says, how important is it to have an agent? Um, I think it's very important. Um, I especially for acting. I mean, for voiceover, there are ways to work without an agent, but most of your big paying jobs are gonna go through ad agencies or casting agencies, and those only work with agents. Um, so um, it doesn't have to be the first thing you do, um, but uh, eventually you will reach a point where it will be very important for you to find uh, great agents, plural. You can have lots of agents. You can have agents in multiple markets. The more agents you have, the more auditions you get and the more work you will book. Yes, well, you heard it first here. That's awesome. She said she got she got agents all over, and you can have them theatrical, literary, commercial. Yeah, brand, it feels ridiculous, voiceover. honestly. People are like, "Who's yeah. your agent?" And I'm like, "I probably have 15." <laughs> yeah, it's like so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, and that's probably good. I know we've we've learned, you know, that it was nice to not. There are places that uh, rep across the board. But it is nice occasionally to have someone that you know is specifically focusing on your commercial auditions, absolutely. on your theatrical auditions in this area, because you you know, absolutely, yeah. Make sure you that you get them all in the different areas. Exactly. So we have a question from uh, Patrice Wallace Moore. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> all right, hi mom. It says, uh, "What are some techniques you use for auditions? Is it harder or easier to do auditions since the pandemic?" It's a two-parter. Um, I mean, for auditioning, it's it's. I have different ones for voiceover and on camera, just because the medium is different. So you're going to be using different techniques. Um, and it also, again, it's completely based on genre. Um, how I would prepare commercial copy is completely different than how I would do animation. Um, for on camera, I don't know if I have a specific technique. I've been in so many classes. I kind of just do like in the moment, like whatever is going to work for that scene. So if it's like highly emotional, you know, I'll use some drama techniques I learned from one studio or if it's comedic, you know, I'll think about, oh, when I was in class here, like we talked about breaking down comedic scenes this way. So it's it's really dependent on the situation. Um, and then in terms of harder, or easier during the pandemic, way easier. Oh my gosh, everything's on my time. You know, like I I have a great setup. Maybe I can, you can kind of see it there. You see my blue curtain? That's oh, yeah. like where oh, I do my self tape setup. Yeah. Um, and I love it. You can tape it as many times as you want, you know, versus going into a room and having one chance. Um, so I think it's easier during the pandemic. Oh. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I booked have... my first co stars during the pandemic. I booked my first series regular during the pandemic. Pandemic's been great for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're winning during the pandemic. I'm like, which you know what? The feel pandemic bad. isn't over. So we're still winning here. Yeah. We're uh, still <laughs> but, the, but also the fact of the matter is that there's something about self tapes now, especially about being at home. There's like in your own space, you know, mm -hmm. you get to have the reader of your choice, sometimes your friend, someone that you're comfortable with. And yeah. like you said, being able to do the audition multiple times until you get a take that you like. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's really nothing is. is unpredicted because, you know, you go into office, you know, maybe your reader's going to get flat. Maybe there's a noise and that you have to react off of, but you're not sure if the reader's going to like make that noise for you. You know what I mean? There's just so huh. much, you know, versus at home, you can just like, all right, this is how we're going to do it. Take it. There's my audition. Right. Look, okay. We're going to get in here to this next question from Educan. Look, she says, where is a good place to start to get into VO? What classes do you recommend? Um, the best thing to do is is get into a class. <laughs> um, always, always start in a class um, in any art medium you do. Um, in terms of like where to take classes, um, it depends. It depends on what genre you're interested in. Um, start in commercial voiceover um just like with on camera it's much much easier to break into um cla like places that i think have really great commercial classes are voice tracks west 
um, and the voice caster. Um, and there's a couple casting directors I know who do private lessons, um, but I wouldn't recommend taking private lessons right away. Um, I think it's better to be in a class with um, many students because then you get to hear a lot of people performing the scripts rather than just yourself. You have nothing to compare off of. Um, and then um, I also offer uh, business and technique classes. Um, but again, because it's private coaching, I wouldn't recommend starting off with me unless you have like class anxiety. <laughs> I can help you with that. Um, but I would always recommend doing group classes first and then eventually private coaching um, to get good at any genre of voiceover. I have a question. So a lot of actors, you know, we use uh, uh, Actors Access, uh what are the big ones? Actors Access, LA Casting, Casting Frontier, Backstage. Those are all, for everyone who's listening, those are all breakdown services where you can submit or your mm -hmm. agents can submit auditions to you. Does voiceover use the same materials? Are there different platforms? Or like, well, how does that work? Um, There's some, sometimes some voiceover auditions do come through ca uh, Actors Access. Um, better ones than LA casting. I feel like the ones I've seen on LA casting are usually always non-union and very, very low paying. Um, most of the, um, most of the jobs, like the good ones are going to come through agents direct. So there's no special website. I literally get an email directly from my agent and I submit directly to my agent and my agent's the one who then gives my audition to the CD. Nice. Okay. All right, so you're here and all here. Thank you, Educam, for your question. We're going to move on to our yeah. next one from Karen. She says, Courtney talked about the importance of knowing the business, learning what... Oh, Courtney, talk about the importance of knowing the business and about learning what aspects of the business, boy, VR and acting was a game changer for you. Um... My favorite, like, piece of little piece of my business, I mean, there's so many, um, mm. like, too much to cover here, but I, I think my favorite thing that I discovered um, was CRM software. It stands for customer relations software, um, just because so much of this industry is keeping up with contacts um, and knowing and remembering, like, how those interactions with contacts went. Um, so there's a lot of different kinds out there. I use Nimble. Um, it is a year, another yearly call that that I have to front, but um, it's basically like an advanced contact system uh, that's synced with my email. And so I can keep track of who I'm emailing. I have a whole profile on like everybody, just so I remember when I emailed them, it notify, it, it, it tracks my emails for me. It, it'll notify me if my email hasn't been opened. Um, so I know if I'm trying to get in contact with someone, like maybe they just haven't seen it yet, you know? Um, and it also like I track my auditions on there. Um, you know, if I have a phone call with someone, I'll like make notes about the phone call because I have a terrible memory. My memory is so bad. I honestly think I have early onset dementia. My memory is so oh my bad. God. So I have to, I have to write everything down. I have to, I have a planner. If you guys saw my planner, it's just like notes upon notes. About. If I don't put something in my planner, it will not happen. I will forget it. So me having the software was really helpful for me because finally I could keep track, you know, of, you know, remembering people's names even because like I I just get confused I feel like my memory's so bad so and and I and I um I can just keep track of everything in one place and because it's like a smart thing it'll like autofill data for me it can link to my Twitter account so I think that was like a huge like leap in my business when I was ready and I had the money to to invest in a software like that I thought it was totally worth it wow listen Courtney you're out here giving gems and Oh my gosh, this is, I'm so excited that everyone gets to see how awesome I already know you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Mom asked another question. She says, what actors or actresses would be your dream to work alongside? So we said that already kind of, but so I'm going to take a question. I'm going to add on to it. Um, so I know you said Jackie Chan, Kristen Bell and Viola Davis, but let's go into it a little bit. Let's play. What specifically do you would you want the show that you do with Viola Davis? If you could have a choice, what would you want that show or that content to be like? Is it another show that you want it to be like? Is it going to be How to Get Away with Murder esque, or is it going to be like Suicide Squad esque? What are you thinking? 
I don't know. <laughs> I just want her to cry on me. So okay. any situation <laughs> that will get me there. Um, I mean, how to how to get away with murder would be great. Just because, yeah. like, in that show, you know, she's she's like such like a woman in power and she's like kind of a mentor to her students and mm. i feel like she would i would look at her that way on set as well so it would just match up really nicely um learning from her like on set and kind of being in that relationship um kristen bell just some sort of comedy she's so funny like she just makes me laugh i just feel like we'd have a lot of fun um, and Jackie Chan, you know, I just want to do some funny stunts. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do you have a lot of experience with stunts? Is that another thing? I mean, well, I know I'm asking for that. <laughs> you know. um, I wouldn't call myself a stunt person, but I have mm -hmm. taken stunt training. Um, I'm trained in um, motion capture, um, which is like a genre of, of voiceover. And you guys have probably seen it where they put you in the suit with the dots. And it's usually for video games um, and CGI is what they use it for. Um, and you have to be very physical. And I think because of my dance background, too, I'm already a very physical person. Mm -hmm. um, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But I do know for a fact that uh, you also used to do boxing. Oh, that's what, that's what the question Kick was. Boxing. Yeah, stunts. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I um, I used to do boxing all the way up until the pandemic, and then I stopped just because uh, it's it's just gross. Like knowing there's a knowing there's a virus out there, and all boxing is is sweaty bodies right. like rubbing up on each other, and and all the equipment. You know, I just don't know how well everything's getting washed down. Um, so I stopped, but I um, I've always been very physical. And, um, like, I would love, like, I, you know, don't expect me to do flips, but yeah. I would love to be in some sort of, like, very physical, um, like, film or TV show. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I know that uh, we've, you see this kind of on the ticker, everyone watching, but if you have any questions, even if you've already asked questions, keep them coming. Honestly, we're here for a couple of more minutes, and you don't want to leave this time and not have the questions that are resting on your heart be answered. <laughs> uh, all right. Cause if you don't, we're going to keep going. Um, and, oh, and my mom is too much. She wants to know a story. She's like, tell about um, the time the fire alarm went off and gotta be you. I'm like, were you there for that? <laughs> I don't the think video. You were, I, okay. I don't think you were there for that, but there was a funny story that happened in gotta be you. Okay. So this is back in the day I did a music video and court was so gracious to not only with one of our other friends at the time helped me choreograph my uh dance moves but also featured with her own dance moves in there and like a lot of hair flips exactly a lot of hair flips and just this is this is how meticulous meticulous and like uh, how how what are the words I'm trying to say Lowe's think oh my gosh uh how much attention to detail that you have I I had just started dancing and she was would look at me look at my moves and see what worked in my body and choreograph from there like i know you're gonna look good doing this and this so i'm gonna give you a couple of those to move with i'm not gonna give you anything you know <laughs> that's gonna make so me look crazy <laughs> exactly i know but that i think that goes back to our really where we're really grinding in those days using using the materials or anything that we had to make to yeah. create art um and so i think like all right let's have a let's see if we have any other questions popping up in here i have okay like if we don't let's talk about this let's talk about faith a little bit question is do you, okay, so the faith can come out in cer certain, many different ways. Some people are prayers. Some people like to meditate. Some people do yoga. Some people, you know, there, there's just so many things that go into this, especially in the industry that we are in. It yeah. feels like some type of faith is important to keep us going. What, what do you do to keep yourself in a, in a, in a, good, in a good place? Um, well, I was raised Buddhist. Um, my mom's Buddhist. Um, I don't really consider myself a Buddhist, but I, you know, I used to go to temple all the time. Um, so I don't really believe um, in 
like a Christian God necessarily, um, but I do consider myself very spiritual. And so usually when I refer to things, I refer to it as the universe mm-hmm. uh, and, and like <laughs> the stars, you know? Um, and I do believe that there is some sort of like magic that has to happen in our lives for certain things to happen and not just in acting, but, you know, like, like the magic that led us to become friends, you know, like, I feel like there's, there's just a certain amount of coincidence, right place, right time that, that goes on. And so, you know, on, on the days, there were a lot, a lot of days where, you know, I would just be in my bed, just so frustrated with not being where I wanted to be, like knowing, knowing that I had the talent knowing that I was just as good as anyone else. Um, wow. Like, you know, and having come really close, like I, I booked a pilot like four years ago now that I did the first episode was, and of course it didn't get green lit, you know, like, like being just so frustrated with like being almost there, almost there, almost there, never catching a break, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you could be so frustrated about it. And then you think about what's the alternative I quit. I'm not going to quit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, <laughs> like, like that, that's even more, that's even more of a joke to me, you know? And, and just like knowing that like you are the main character of the story that is your life and nothing is going to happen unless you make it happen. Um, so you do everything you can, you know, to, to, control what you can control your craft your equipment like learning networking I hate that but you know like just like expanding your circle and and just absorbing as much as you can and then on top of that the magic has to come in and you have to be in the right place at the right time like I this this job that I'm working on right now like this role it feels like it was written for me her personality like I didn't they didn't give me the whole breakdown when I booked it but after I booked it they sent me this whole character breakdown sheet and there was we were so similar we're like both type a like we both like the same things we both dislike the same things like all of a sudden we're the same ethnicity you know what I mean it was just like this was meant to be mine and I just got so lucky that I happened you know, to have, you know, be working with this coach that I was working with who coached me on this audition to have uh, my managers who who are the ones who pitched me for this project, you know, like I, so many things had to align and like, that's magical to me. And that you don't know when that's going to happen, you know, because there's only so much you can do. Like you, you don't, you never know when your moment is going to be. And I was prepared. I was like, I was prepared to pull a Morgan Freeman and like, you know, wait 40 years into my career before I had a break, you know, because I was like, I'd rather do that than quit. Because like, what else am I going to do? Like, I love this. I don't love accounting. I don't love like working anywhere else, really, you know, like, so I was like, I was prepared. I was like, I'm going to do what I do. And I'm going to try my freaking best. (laughs) And I and this is the journey. And if I died tomorrow, or if I die in, you know, like, when I'm really, really old and wrinkly, at least I'll have known that I fucking did it. You know, like I yeah. did it with, with nothing, like coming into it as a blank slate. Like I fucking did it. Sorry. <laughs> but I just, I just, I just get really fired up because it's like, you have so much power in you to make things happen. And if like, if you're not going to make it happen for yourself, no one else is. So all you can do is put your best foot forward and try your best. And there's going to be days where you move forward and there's going to be days when you move back, but you do what you can. And then like that magic that comes around with like things aligning and being in the right place, right time. I I truly believe like that, that will come to you. um, If, if you keep moving forward. Listen, you're talking all facts and the craziness <laughs> is like, even during the pandemic, you were like, if there were rough times before the pandemic, if you would have given up before the pandemic, think about where we would be right now. All the things that we would be missing out on, all the celebrations yeah. that we like, literally. So I feel like if you're an artist out here or if you're, if you're pursuing your dream, if you're doing anything, what Courtney just said is, if you don't take anything else away, do not give up your blessing, your your win could be right around the corner if you're not getting the results that you want. 
yeah. find another way to get it. Yeah. To refocus yourself, reprogram yourself, look and see what other people are doing. This is not just about the, this is not just about acting and voiceover work or anything. This can be applied all around. Okay. Yeah. That's, I'm sorry. You got me. She said, <laughs> I beep, I did it. I beep, I did it. Okay. <laughs> she, baby, she did that. Uh, uh, look, okay. So we're going to get into another question here because Karen had one of her. Mm-hmm. Oh, that got me all riled up. Wow, oh, so excited. Ooh. Okay. Educant said, facts. Listen, <laughs> facts. Karen says, though you are not an agent, what suggestions do you have for attracting one? She, Karen has reels, training, and setting up her home stu- her home her next home studio. So she's looking to get to the next level. How what, what advice do you have for her? Um, there there are a lot of things you can do at this point. Um, so um, you okay? Uh, I would suggest reaching out to um there's a group called um the pgm vo list which is the people of the global majority um uh voice actors list (laughs) um which is particularly great um for someone like you karen um i'm on the list too it's um for people of the global majority aka non-white people um and uh, this Sorry. list is like connected to a lot of really, really great agencies. It's a great place to start um, because um, there's just it's just re- it's like trending right now. So a lot of I know personally, a lot of agents have been looking at those lists. Um, I would also um, like research agencies, um, both high and mid level Uh, voiceover agencies for you and um, like send emails. I send a lot of cold emails um, and I would also reach out to people who know your work that you're friends with, who could possibly give you a referral just like you would on camera. Um, And then uh, I would look in different areas. Like uh, if you have a home studio, you don't have to work with agents that are just in LA. Texas has a huge market. Um, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, I have an agent in Colorado. Like there are agents in so many different markets um, that you could be reaching out to with your home studio. Um, the reason I audition so much is because I have so many agents, you know, so um, definitely reach out, um, you know, always keep it short, sweet and simple. Um, attach your, uh, you know, your reels. If you if you have a home studio sample, attach that as well so they can hear it. Um, if you don't know what a home studio sample is, I can tell you what that is later. Um, yeah, your, uh, your training, um, they're going to want to know how proficient you are um, in using uh, software. I don't know what kind of DAW you use. Um, and they're going to they're gonna want to know about connectivity, source connect, ISDN, IPDTL. Make sure these are all terms you know because they're going to ask about that. And then I would give like maybe two or three highlights. Um, like maybe you just booked this thing or uh, you just finished a class with this really well-known coach or, you you know, like a like couple highlights. Um, but definitely like you must list your training proficiency in, in engineering and stuff. Um, and yeah, try and keep it to something where you don't have to scroll too much in the email you know you have to fit all of that information but very nicely in like a little section for them and you just email email every six months if you don't hear a response email six months later um it's you know like i said that magic right place right time it'll come but you gotta keep giving that output because if you're not doing that output you're not going to get any input back dang that hit me in the heart she said because you could get discouraged and you can just be like, I'm going to give up. But if you're not put, doing any output, you're not going to get any input. Back. Yeah. And, and like I said, that's oh. one of the reasons I have CRM software because it yeah. reminds me. I can set reminders like this person. I will check back in six months. Six months later, it'll be like reminder, email this person about X, Y, Z, you know, because I need that. But if you know, if you have a great memory, unlike me, you can do that yourself. But um. You know, you just, you just really have to be on it. Like, don't let the ball drop. The ball is always in your court. Ooh. The ball is always in your court. Don't let that ball drop. Even even if they're not passing that ball back, you you know, there are other places and people you can pass that ball to. Listen. Okay, basketball references. <laughs> Capri is so proud. <laughs> <laughs> he's, busy, he's watching the Patriots game right now. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, 
So people, we still have some time here. So ask these questions. But I have another great question. Um, Courtney is multi-hyphenated, as you know. She's an actor, amazing, comedic, dramatic, <laughs> dramedy. She does voiceover, obviously. And she does uh, choreography. But there are other things that she has done throughout her time when things might have not been as, you know, as, what's the word, lucrative or as a booming, as yeah. <laughs> booming as is right now. Boomin'. There are other things that she did to keep herself going. And you kind of know what I'm talking about. But for everyone listening, kind of tell them what you do, what you did when, you know, things weren't booming as they are right now. Yeah, um, I wrote and produced a couple shorts, um, all scripts that I was that I really loved and I had so much fun doing. The most important thing is it, it must be fun because if you're producing or doing something on the side, that seems um, like it's taking from you rather than giving from you. Like this career already feels like it could take a lot from you. So whatever you do on the side, it's got to it's got to light a fire in you, you know, so. Both of those shorts, I had so much fun making, um, collaborating with people, getting to know people, people I'm still really good friends with. Um, I also wrote a feature film that we shot a trailer for. Um, and again, that was like a huge passion, project of mine um, that just really, it really lit me up. And you, you always have to look for things that light you up in this industry because it's, it's so easy to, you know, kind of like dip into the more negative moments. Um, so find find what makes you happy within it um, and do that. Listen, Courtney, these are nuggets. You are <laughs> giving nuggets. So my dad, he also said he loved the basketball reference. He says, awesome. It's amazing. Keep shooting the basketballs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he has a question. And I think that uh, it's important to now because to kind of think about these things. Um, and they're a little bit more tangible now, but his question is, what does the future hold for Courtney Lynn? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ideally I can work in this industry until I die. <laughs> you yeah. know, I like, ideally I'm in a place, um, where I, I can just, I just want to be working. Like, I don't know. I've always loved work. Like I said, call it capitalism ingrainment or call it me being like a hardcore Capricorn. I don't know what it is, but I love working when it's something I'm passionate about. So I, I would, I would love to just literally be working in this industry forever um, and be successful enough at it where, you know, I can be comfortable and give back. And, and I love um, like teaching, you know, like, I think that's why I still teach dance. Cause I really love teaching and helping others and to be in a position um, as, as I grow to be able to help more people, um, and like, just overall, like make this, make this space like great for everybody. Yeah. Really quickly. I know you just talked on some, spoke on something that is really important. Like one of your passions is giving back and helping people. And I know you mentioned earlier today that you do like free, like 20, uh, 20 minute consultations, but that's something that you don't have to do. And that's the fact, the fact that like, you know, there is a desire to give back, to teach people what they know, to be the resource that maybe you didn't necessarily have right out of Absolutely. That. Yeah. I wasted so much time and money throwing darts because like I said, I was a blank slate. I didn't know anything. So I was just like, I'd work, you know, literally so many jobs. And then I just have this money that I'd be like, all right, I'm going to invest in this. I'm going to invest in that. Like, oh crap, that didn't work. That didn't work. I learned something here. That's cool. Okay. Let me try this. Um, and not everything's going to work for everybody. Um, but hopefully, you know, we can make this process easier. Um, because it, this, it's also like this industry is like growing, you know, like voiceovers, yeah. like booming, especially like now with on-camera stuff, like sh just so many new streaming sites, like Paramount plus Peacock TV, like there's going to be more, um, yeah. there's just so much opportunity and like, why not make this a space where everybody can thrive? I hear that. Oh, we got Educan on here. She says, so awesome. She will be signing up. Great. Listen, let me, <laughs> let me throw this uh, back on Courtney's website. It's there. You know, if you need to follow her on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. I mean, at the, let me tell you, Dad asked what the future holds for Courtney. I also do not know, 
but I can tell you what I want and what I hope. It's like, this is my best friend. She works so hard. Eventually, we're going to get to the place where we don't even have to audition anymore. They just right? gonna call. Offer they're gonna hear only. the voice exactly. They're <laughs> gonna hear the voice and they're gonna say that is Courtney Jones, Courtney Lynn. We want her here. You know, we want her on our on our track. We want. We know what she can bring. We want to see what she can do with our material. Yeah. Like the and you're creating a foundation for yourself that's gonna allow for longevity. And I think yeah. people watching, people who are intending to get to the place that we are and could get to the place that you are and continue to build on that you have to create a foundation for yourself where you are able to really plant so that you can grow yeah and it feels like all that we you've been talking to us you've planted you've you've watered you've done everything that you needed to do and now we're seeing the seedlings we're seeing the roots we're seeing the fruit bearing from all the things that and the hard work that you put in and it's yeah. great on my end and it's inspiring on my end to see that so, yeah, I just wanted to throw that little nugget out there. So I just, I was so proud. <laughs> I was so proud. Take this. So my, my dad has another question in here. He mm -hmm. says, outside of family members, who is the person that has impacted you the most? It could be like a, a maybe a mentor or, you know, let's go in that route. Um, in terms of mentors, I do have one mentor who's very supportive. Um, I met her literally, it was like babysitting for a family um, where like the mom happened to work at a studio and that studio, like this woman like works at that studio and, and she just kind of like introduced us. So it was like very random uh, how we met. Um, but she's been like, she taught me so much about how like the TV industry works because um, they do mostly TV. Um, and it's been really nice to have someone um, like kind of like answer my questions when I had them. And then also like besides my mentors, like my friends, obviously. I'm an only child, okay? I'm an only child who moved away from home. Like my friends have been my, you know, support network from day one. Like you guys obviously know Lowe's is like my number one hype man. <laughs> like you can tell from watching this. Um, and I just think, you know, having a support system is so important for this business um like it i feel really lucky because like i i i had a support you know some people don't have that i have a support system i'm not that far away from home i know it's harder for people who have to come farther um i know like lowe's you know your family's in new york like that's hard yeah. my mom's in san diego you know so i feel like I've, I've been really lucky um for that as well and i feel like i've been really lucky in the sense that um in 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 terms of support you know it's like weird to talk about but it's important to talk about but like financial support is so much because this it, this industry is so expensive like i've been lucky enough to like work work with like in college I was babysitting for a family and after I graduated I kept babysitting for them they referred me to more and I was babysitting all the time and and I managed to find jobs where they were super flexible um, and allowed me to pursue this career because a lot of people they come to LA and they end up leaving because it's like too hard to make money and and then live in this super expensive place and then try and spend money on even just an acting class not including all the subscriptions we have to have not including headshots you know like acting class alone is like 300 a month easy you know i was spending more on my acting stuff than i was on rent and utilities combined every month you know so you have to have the like different areas of support are you have to have all those foundations grounded before you can really focus on like your acting and like growing that aspect of your life there you have it there you have it i mean if there's any again i'm just going to say this uh because we're getting close close to end um if you are not following courtney on instagram on twitter on tiktok at the Courtney Lynn, look at her. I know. I'm like, look at, look at the. Uh, she says, "When are you coming to New York to visit? Um, maybe <laughs> for the wedding. Plus one. Ooh, plus yes. one. <laughs> we'll see. Oops, Cheryl. I'm sorry to give you more people <laughs> to add on the list. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, that would be so much fun. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and that's, uh, I guess, closing. This is been such a 
joy to have you as someone that I can connect with on this journey. Like we went in a place where we weren't even thinking about being actors. Yeah. When we got, when I was in college and all of a sudden, like here we are. And I'm like, this is someone that I lean on that I can call and be like, this is what happened. Yeah. This is what helped me. How do you do this? And then she can call me and be like, this has happened. Is this weird? And like we really are relying on one another. And you know, our our community has expanded so far beyond ourselves that our experiences are so vast. And something that like Court will have an experience where she did this project and she met this person, she did this, and that information is something that is benefiting me and helping me in my issue that I'm talking to her about. So I'm like, the universe is working itself in so many different ways. And as the we magic, continue to grow, I'm telling you, it's the magic. The magic. <laughs> it's, it's the magic. Okay. I'll, uh, and I hope that it continues to sprinkle on all of us and all of you watching. And, you know, if you don't feel any magic, go out and make the magic for yourself, okay? Exactly. Figure out what works for yourself and you let's do it. You are the main character in your story. Exactly. Go out and do it. Wait, so hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put you in solo layout and I want you to say that one more time. Go. You are the main character in your story. Period. <laughs> Period. Period. <laughs> so, everyone, we just want to thank Courtney for coming on the Blueprint Podcast. It's been so amazing to talk to you here. And it's amazing to show you off to everyone watching. <laughs> and honestly, you have to stay up on what's happening with her because big things are on the horizon. They're coming. They are happening. They have happened. And we cannot wait for you to continue to blossom into the amazing artist that we know that you are. So, yeah. Thank you, Courtney. Thank Everyone's you so coming much, in Liz. comments. They're saying, thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Look, we love her. We love her. I'm going to just share the thank you, Courtney. Thank you. So everyone watching, it, our time is up. The Blueprint Podcast this week is done. And I just want to thank everyone for watching, whether or not you're watching with us live or you're re-watching this. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please, you have Courtney's information. We feel free to uh, reach out to the Blueprint podcast message if you need any follow-ups, if you weren't clear on any of the information that was said here. We're here for you to be a support system for you to be able to utilize all the great little nuggets that we've had here on the show. So we're going to wave a goodbye to everybody. Bye, everyone. And hope to see you next Sunday <laughs> at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time for the guest. And thank you for tuning into the Blueprint podcast. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L O W E S M O O R E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the teaching is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. It's sufficient funds, but it's significant.